Hi, I'm Giacomo Donati. I am uh, uh, from Italy and uh, I'm a postdoc here, uh, almost finishing my experience here, and I work on uh, uh, tissue repair in uh, skin. Hi, I'm Atefe Mobasseri. I'm from Iran. I'm postdoc research associate, and the aim of my project is to look at the effect of the surface topography and chemistry on the behavior of stem cells. Hi, I'm Gernot Walko. I'm from Austria, and I'm a senior postdoc in the World Lab, where I'm investigating the interactions between human epidermal stem cells and their local micro environment. Hi, I'm Christina Philippias. I'm from South Africa with Greek heritage. Um, I'm a postdoc in Fiona Watts' lab uh, looking at different subpopulations of fibroblasts for wound healing. Uh, myself is Kif Liakat Ali uh, from India. I'm a new postdoc in Fiona Watts' lab. Uh, my project is on investigating novel mechanism involved in skin function. So for me it was quite easy uh, uh, because uh, I was already with Fiona so I actually it was easy because I need to continue my uh, project and finish that. But also it was a great opportunity because you have uh, the possibility to meet new people and increase your network. So that for me was what really made the difference. Uh, yeah. My, mine was quite different in that I uh, did my, my PhD here, so it was a natural progression to stay at King's one side um, finished because I noticed how much support um, we got as researchers and how there's a lot of interaction between other researchers, so it was really good. And, and King's is world-renowned, you know, it is in the top seven of the UK, um, top 20 in the world, so it's, it's, it's really good to be a part of it and associated with, with King's. Um, my uh, history is same as um, Gernot, uh, Giacomo. Uh, so I originally came to King's to continue and complete my work uh, from Cambridge. Um, so, but after coming to King's, I, I discovered that King's is a great place to do science with uh, advanced facilities and uh, tremendous opportunity for established new collaboration. So coming to King's was totally rewarding. Well, I choose KCL because of combination of different reasons. And the uh, first one is the research project is uh, very interesting to me and also it was relevant to my background with the new application and different application. And also high profile researcher at the KCL and impressive uh, laboratory environment was uh, played a important r and role in my decision. And as you said, KCL is a prestigious university, so um, there are lots of opportunity for personal and uh, professional development. For me, moving to KCL was, was a very easy choice because I always wanted to be in, in Fiona's lab. So when she told me she's going to move from Cambridge here to KCL, I just said, OK, well, here we go. And I got really excited because, I mean, come on, this is London. This is a fantastic city. It's one of the biggest medical science hubs in the world. After, after Harvard actually, so it's, it's really great to be here. Well, I definitely see myself as an independent PI at an academic institution in the, in the near future where I can combine my passion for research with my other passion for, for teaching. Mine's slightly different in that I, I want to get into the commercial sector, so um, developing the cell therapies I'm using at the moment, I would like to see it to fruition, like actually being produced, manufactured in a cell therapy, in a cell, being produced in a cell factory uh, economically so that we can um, address really unmet needs in medicine today economically for the NHS patients. I have to say that. If you think about what you want to do, this is a really good place because in here you, you can find a, a link between like academia and uh, uh, industry as well because like Catapult is already trying to, to push that, so to link in there. So in my, my, my type of uh, what I want to do next is as much more, sim is more similar to Gernot, so I want to be PI and establish my own group. But it's a pity that I cannot do it here because here it's a great place where there is so much resources, but as you guys know, I mean, as a scientist, we are pushed to go and change environment to, to, to have a more efficient science and so on. So I would probably go somewhere in Europe or stuff like that. I think, uh, I 
think we should count ourselves lucky because to we have choice to decide, right? I mean, we could go into academia or industry I mean, based on your experience, and we have more avenues to move on. So my ambition is to um, uh, establish an independent research group to tackle some of the fundamental questions in stem cell biology. I believe, I think, l investigating how normal stem cell is functioning is crucial to understand how a disease is, you know, grown. So I think we have, with the advances of uh, new, uh, you know, cutting edge techniques, say for example, we have now in this age of you know, new gene editing tools where you could, you know, um, modify or correct mutations in genetic disorder. And techniques like growing cells, stem cells, in, or iPS cells in a you know, large quantity, like in stem cell factories, I think uh, we, have, we are in a really good age where you could choose your career and build your career. Well, uh, for me, my ambition is to uh, pursue my career to um, academia and research role. And also, I like to begin to build up uh, skills and uh, relevant experience, uh, especially in uh, leadership and management. And um, also, I like to gain more uh, positive uh, peer recognition in my field. Interesting question. It's, uh, it's for me, uh, I think he has great potential because, I mean, uh, actually, regenerative medicine is not born now, but has been there before because many cellular therapy were already uh, uh, done before. But now we have much more interesting from the, the, the society, and so we might have the resources to really push it. And I know some scientists are uh, more like skeptical on it because uh, we are uh, pushing the concept as much as we can to really uh, get resources, but at the same time, the potential is massive. Uh, I think, I think, uh, for example, now we can do gene editing on cells, on human cells, and then put back in in patient. Uh, but maybe one day, uh, this could be a dream. But we could be able to to even make organs. Obviously, we're not talking ten years. This probably is much more. I don't know what you think, guys. It's it's not something <laughs> that's going to happen soon. But I think that is really the potential. I feel that we would be able to, to definitely develop tissues in the next 10 years. I think in the last, especially the last three or four years, the, like it's grown exponenti exponentially um, in the field. I mean, we're at that point now where there's loads of different sectors of biotechnology that are now converging to, to push things forward. And, and now that regulatory as well as publicly um, there seems to be a better understanding of it, so we're not we're not being there's not a lot of red tape as there was five years ago, and I think now that everybody's on board with it and they see the potential that it's not obviously we're going to do it sensibly and we're not going to go out of control, but um, they they can see the potential the the risk benefit ratio is is much less yeah so um, I think that definitely bring on the new the you know if we can grow our own organs then and, and address the organ shortage failure like, of, of society, w that would be incredible. I, I agree I agree with Christian because I, I strongly believe, I think there is, because 10 years before people were skeptical about what we are today, right? So I think regenerative medicine has a huge prospect for the future with, as I mentioned, the techniques that not only those techniques, you know, we, we know that we are in advanced, you know, growing organoids, you know, on the, in the dish. I think it is a realistic goal. Uh, it, it shouldn't be excluded that, you know, it, it's, it can't be possible or it will be delayed. I think we have to be positive about the growth of uh, the science. Yeah, totally. And coming from Austria, where stem cell research and, and regenerative medicine are still in the infancy, I must say I was really amazed about the number of initiatives that exist already in this country to really push stem cell research into the clinics. So I think places like, like, like here at KCL, they will be spearheading the European movement to a broad, accessible, regenerative uh, medicine. Yeah, I think it's a very exciting time for regenerative medicine research. 
and it is even uh, more exciting and um, interesting than last 10 years. And um, I think regenerative medicine is going to be more and more intradisciplinary, involving different fields of people, clinicians, um, uh, physicists, uh, chemists, and biologists, and biomaterialists. And uh, I think such a center like stem cells and regenerative medicine can um, facilitate and build up all the relevant uh, expertise for the meaningful and um, successful research. Well, when I first read the booklet that was published by our center one and a half years ago, that summarizes all the research activities going on at the university, but also at the, the medical, uh, at, the, at the hospitals. I was really stunned about the wealth of knowledge that has accumulated at, at KCL. So um, I see our function as, as a center of stem cells and regenerative medicine to serve kind of the nucleus in the future to foster more collaborative efforts among these diverse groups and, and bring all the, the uh, knowledge that we have together to be even, even more productive. And one of the initiatives that we have already taken here at the center was to install a, a seminar series, which uh, we called Stem Cells at Lunch, which is an informal seminar series where speakers from Kings, but also international speakers come together to talk about uh, unpublished uh, data. Mm -hmm. and, and that has been well accepted by, by the local research community, but also across London. I think Leonard is correct because King's got really a vibrant uh, stem cell communi community with researchers working from a range of fields from dentistry to biophysics who, ha who show uh, and share the interest in stem cell. And, uh, and also I think as you mentioned, I think the CSCRM has a role to play to connect this community as a hub in many instances like organizing events and uh, you know, many occasions where the, it facilitates the knowledge exchange. I mean, from a clinical perspective, I mean, I'm at the end of the pipeline, so I get to see, I mean, we, we say KIF is developing kind of the basic science of understanding the mechanisms. I'm trying to get what we do in the lab to the clinic. So I get to um, work with the cell therapy catapult and they, they They've been very helpful and useful. They hold a lot of seminars, a lot of workshops. I went on a cell manufacturing workshop, which was really interesting. And, and, and it's those kind of hubs that you get to meet these people from different sectors, um, as well as interact with the commercial partners. So I find that it's, yeah, it's really broad in that we, it's, it's, a, it's a good range. I think, I think it's our responsibility because the resources in terms of like uh, the environment to do everything is here, uh, KCR, sure. everything. So it's up to us now link each other because it's not easy to, as a basic uh, scientist to talk with some clinician. So it's really up to us now. To do that. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, there are lots of potential here. Yes, there is sometimes the problem is that as a basic science, sometimes we are really focused yes. on our precise scope, uh, also as a career, not just as a like mm -hmm. a scientific goal, and then. Uh, we really need have to I really have to push myself to, to go in, in in a more like clinical direction. So that's what I think we should do. Well it was difficult of course as you can imagine um, working in a construction site with dust and noise was a daily challenge for us to do good science. But looking back I'm I'm very proud of all of ourselves because we really managed to get good science done. Mm -hmm. And this was because we, we had a really good team spirit at the time. There was a lot of elbow grease involved <laughs> uh, and, and, and a lot of improvisation as well. But uh, the papers that, that we started to publish, they kind of give a testimony to what we achieved during, during this hard period. I think it's all part of the training experience for scientists that we have to, it's a very competitive job, so we have to work no matter what. And so we can actually use this in the future because many of us want to have a lab, so th this will be the basic <laughs> to learning, what yeah. to do and what not, what not to do mm, uh, in exactly. that situation. Yeah, exactly. so.
I, th I think it's, it's, yeah, as you said, it's an experience. And uh, it, it really, as such, didn't affect the routine research life. But any new initiative in science is a great thing. And it was more exciting to see uh, brand new research centers getting shaped in front of your own eyes. Mm -hmm. So I think it was, it was OK. Yeah, I particularly enjoyed the freedom we had at some point about buying new equipment, <laughs> yeah. about organizing the lab. So Picking that, the that carpet color. Exactly, that was, that was <laughs> the fun part. <laughs> and it was also a really good team building experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, just speaking for, for me and the other people working in, in tissue culture, we really got, got close friends because we, we had to back up each other on a daily basis to, to get things done. So that was good. I, I like the generous space, the way which the open space um, allows the lab uh, and the other teams to inter integrate very well uh, for knowledge sharing and idea exchange. Um, with the state of art uh, facilities uh, that allows us to accelerate our research. And this lab has a fantastic view, not only for uh, <laughs> London, very but true. also there it has a view for uh, future science, I would say. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like to work in a perfect brand exactly. new environment? It's good because keep up the mood. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes when you have bad results, you are sad. But if you're in a nice environment, everybody's more happy. And also the instruments are there, so mm -hmm. it's very good. And at the moment, it's still not too crowded. So actually, we have new instruments in an environment which we can still use very, we have access quickly to, oh, to have more freedom. Yes, <laughs> so now is the best moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, I mean, the state of the art equipment is really the thing that, that you know, I, every day I kind of get surprised at how quickly I can do my research um, how effectively and more accurately now by, by using the latest technology. Um, so that, for me, it, it kind of takes a lot of time away from you know, older procedures, um, I'm amazed that you can do so much more because you've got better equipment to support you. Um, and just, yeah, just the way that we, there's lots of different scientists from different backgrounds. So the, the way we, we can all kind of collaborate and see things from different perspectives. I, I really like that we've got this collaborative ethos about the, the center. Yeah, I think the, the layout of the lab is perfect and with the easy access to different labs so you have everything you want to uh, perform your experiments.